Okay, nampak ya eh? semua nampak ya. Eh? Kalau tak nampak. Perfect. Okay, so uh, a quick one that we will go through a bit because uh, it's very important, it's extremely important. You should be extremely good in your mode conversion already from your SPM. But over here, your mode conversion today, I don't want you to memorize by heart because I want you to use the format of ratio. We will be using a lot of ratio. What is mean by ratio over here is this, X to Y is how much. At the same time, ratio is also, is also pecahan. Ratio sebenarnya adalah pecahan, sayang. X to Y is actually X over Y. Okay? So, ratio I mean over here is, if I say one apple will give you, one apple will give you one cup of juice. That is ratio. So, how many cup of juice if I have eight apples? If one apple give you one cup of juice, so how many cup of juice? One to one ratio, so you will have eight cups. Okay? But what happened if right now, but what happened if, sorry, my phone. Okay. What happened if right now I have one apple and I say one apple will give you four cup of juice? Mana logic eh? But besar gila apple kamu. Tak jadilah. Four apples. Alright. Four apples only give you 0 0.7 cups of juice. That is the problem. Because the question will not, never give you one-to-one -one ratio. So what happens when it's not one-to-one -one ratio? Four apples equals uh, give you 0 0.7 cup. So how many cup of juice that you have if you have 14 apples? That is the question that you will always come across, X cups. And to solve this mathematic is pretty simple, okay? I don't know what method you use. There is a lot of math solution that you can solve it, but I think the simplest is cross. Darab silang. So 4 times X will give you 4X equals to 14 times 0 0.7. This is the easiest that I think that you can do. So to solve the x, your x will then be equals to 14 times 0 0.7 over 4. That will give rise to how many cups of juice that you will get. And this is what we call ratio. Previously in your SPM, what you will do is you will memorize by heart. Cikgu akan paksa. Tak tahulah zaman saya, cikgu saya paksa saya hafal. Sama ada dia darab atau bahagi. Right? Tapi bila kamu hafal darab atau bahagi, masuk exam 10 kali, 9 kali kamu confuse. Alright? When you come across a question, you will be like, okay, so saya nak darab ke saya nak bahagi? So saya tak nak kamu hafal. And if you look at my notes, saya tak ada konsep darab atau bahagi. I only give you the relationship between them. First thing, mo is always sitting in the center. When mo is sitting in the center, it means if the question gives you mass, Soalan bagi mass. Soalan minta volume. Kamu kena langkau daripada mass, cari number of more, baru cari volume. Kalau soalan bagi mass, sekali lagi. Tapi soalan minta number of particles. I think most of my examples, right? The question give you mass over here. Alright, question asking for number of particles. So how do you do? Can I change the mass to the number of particles straight away? Cannot. Everything must go through number of mole. That's why number of mole sitting in the center. So you must change your mass to number of mole. From the number of mole, you change to number of particles. Okay? So number of mole is the conversion. Sebab tu nama dia adalah mole conversion. Okay? And right now, every single uh, relationship need something. The mole conversion require a factor, require something to convert. So the first one, number of particles. Number of particles can be number of atom, can be number of molecule, can be number of ion. That's why in your topic 1.1, your part 1 video is talking about what is atom, what is molecule, and what is ion. It's very important. And the factor that you use to change the number of mole to number of particles is our Gado constant. 
Avogadro constant, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. That is your Avogadro constant. So, to change mole to number of particles, you will definitely use Avogadro constant sama ada darah atau bahagi, tak payah hafal sebab kita akan guna ratio. In the other words, one mole of anything, basically, will give rise to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. If I say I have one mole of cars, okay, one mole, I wish, man, I wish, I really wish, one mole of car will give rise to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 cars. That is like a lot of cars, okay? So if you say you have one mole of girlfriend, right, Benjin? Benjin say I have one mole of girlfriend. Benjin is having 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 girlfriend. Wow, that is a lot. Okay, so next, if I am talking about number of mole, but I'm changing my number of mole to mass, and the relationship between number of mole and mass is molar mass. Molar mass is quite simple. Everybody should be able to calculate the molar mass. Okay, and for example, over there, if I have one mole of oxygen gas, then it will be equals to 32 gram. Because O2, O is 16, 16 darat 2, 32. One mole of hydrogen will be one gram. One mole depends on what are you talking about. One mole of what? One mole of nitrogen, 14 gram. Okay? One mole of chlorine, 35.5 gram. Your relative atomic mass. Okay? That is your molar mass. Next, volume. Volume having two conditions, which you need to pay very, very close attention to. Volume at S RTP, sorry. Volume at RTP means 298 Kelvin, 1 ATM. 298 Kelvin is equals to 25 degrees Celsius. And that is your volume, uh, sorry, that is your room temperature pressure. RTP stands for room temperature pressure. Okay. And the molar volume that you use for this room temperature and pressure is 24 liter, which means one mole of any gas, basically any gas, but must be gas, will be equals to 24 liter. Any gas, one mole of oxygen gas, 24 liter, but with a condition, the condition right now is 25 degrees Celsius, 1 atm. One mole of any gas at RTP will be 24.0 liter. Last but not least, we have volume, but another condition over there, which is your STP. STP over here represent... Okay, your STP over here, mole to STP, represent 273 Kelvin 1 atm. 273 Kelvin is not 1 degree Celsius, it's 0 degree Celsius, okay? 0 degree Celsius and 1 atm is your STP. And the molar volume, we call this molar volume, and the molar volume for STP is 22.4 liter. In the other words, anything, all right, any gas, one mole of any gas will be 22 0.4 liter at SDP. All right. Any gas, it will be the same. So the only thing that will change is actually your mass, if you look at it. Because one mole of any particles will be the same Avogadro constant. One mole of any gas at RTP will be 22.4 liter. One mole of any gas at SDP will be 22.4 liter. So the only things that will change in one mole is actually the mass. Okay. All right, uh, all this example, just now your friend say. Uh, Madam. Yes. Uh, the, in the previous slide, uh, there's, uh, what, uh, like, let's say the example, one mole of anything, then the equals to as three dashes, Madam. Because it's a comparison. Um, okay. Your friend asking this, why you will see me using three dashes along the way. Because this, why I use equal over here? Because they are equal, okay? 
this why is a three dashes three dashes is a comparison all right it's a comparison one more of any gas will be 24 liter is a comparison okay it's different uh, mathematic wise they are different equal to sign and also three dashes okay whenever you're doing ratio we'll be using this <coughs> okay so <clears throat> um, your friend said example three just now, so we jump all the way to example three first. But not block trying to bring example three. Okay. So example three over here. <clears throat> I have ammonia gas, NH3, colorless gas. 10 liter of ammonia is 298 Kelvin. Okay. At 1 ATM. So 298 Kelvin and 1 ATM is what condition? From there, you should know 298 Kelvin is also 25 degrees Celsius, 1 ATM. This condition is actually RTP. So your 10 liter of ammonia gas right now is at the condition of room temperature, room temperature and pressure, okay? And the question asks you to calculate the volume of ammonia gas, but at different condition. So the trick over there is they give you the volume, but they also ask for the volume. Because volume, we have two condition. So the one that they ask for is at 273 Kelvin 1 ATM, which is STP. But we know that to change the volume RTP to STP, Kita kena go through satu benda. Kita kena dapatkan dulu number of mole. So cari macam mana? Your mole ratio come in. Look at the way that I do my mole ratio. I will always start with my uh, one mole. One mole of ammonia at RTP. That is a theory. Always start with the theory. Always start with the one mole. One mole of ammonia at RTP is 24 liter. We agree on this just now. It's a theory. So right now, I have only 10 liter. I have 10 liter, I don't have 24. So 10 liter is equals to how many mole unknown x. So mathematics, remember the cross, darab silang. So apa yang kita akan buat, kita akan darab silang kat situ. Satu akan darab dengan 10, x akan darab dengan 24. That's why you come across 10 equals to 24x. And your, <coughs> sorry, and your x calculated will be 0 0.4167 mole of ammonia. This is not the final answer. Question asking for volume. Volume at STP. Always start with the theory. One mole of ammonia at STP is 22.4 liter. Now, the number of mole that I have that you calculated, bring in. I have 0 0.4167 mole of ammonia. Equals to how many liter. Okay. Darab silang sekali lagi sayang. Satu darab Y. So dapat Y. 22 darab, 22.4 darab 0 0.4167. So you will have your Y equals to how many liter. Your part? Anybody? 9.341 liter. 9.341 liter. Agree? Class? Okay. Yes. Alright, you need liter wajib. Jawapan akhir sentiasa datang dengan liter. If anybody is not using the mole ratio method, sila buat balik because over here, saya tak nak kamu hafal darab atau bahagi. Yes, you will tell me teacher darab je lah. Tahu kan jawapan dia? Sebab mole ratio akan dapat satu markah. We will be, <coughs> you will be using mole ratio at the end of this chapter in your 1.3 later on. Over here, you will have one mark. So, sila tinggal lah kalau nak tinggal sangat. Okay? Jangan tinggal. Kita akan guna cara more ratio. Okay, just very quickly go through your example one. <coughs> example one, glucose is a simple sugar with molecular formula C6H12O6. 4.75 gram of glucose is given. So, right now, mass is given. Mass is 4.75 gram of glucose. First question, simple. Molar mass. Molar mass, tak tahu kira, saya tak tahu lah. 
Cuma saya nak tekankan satu je. Molar mass over here, you need gram per mole. Molar mass is different from your relative molecular mass. Molar mass adalah molar, mole, in gram. So, adalah gram per mole. I know your relative molecular mass, saya kata tak ada unit. Because they are relative. Relative molecular mass and molar mass, they are actually the same value. Kalau kamu kira, the value is the same, but the unit is different. Okay? The unit must be gram per mole, first thing. Second thing, look at the atomic mass that I use. The atomic mass that I use is up to one decimal place. In our syllabus, all the atomic mass must be up to one decimal place. All right? Kena guna table constant kita. Tak boleh guna dalam product table yang nombor bulat. Next question. Calculate the number of mole of glucose. So we know that molar mass is actually the mass when it's one mole. So bring it to the B. One mole of your glucose will be equal to 180 gram. And right now, I only have 4.75 gram. So 4.75 gram over here equals to how many mole? 4.75 equals to X mole. Again, darab silang. Okay. So, bila darab silang, kamu akan dapat matematik dia lah. Satu darab 4.75. 4.75. 1.80 darab X. 1.80 darab X. So, solve the X. You will get your X is 0 0.0264 mole of glucose. And this number of mole will be used for the rest of the question. Okay. C. Number of molecule. Number of molecule over here is actually number of particles. A type of number of particles, your molecule. In the other words, kita akan guna Avogadro constant. Okay. Do we still need to find the number of mole? No, because number of mole that you calculated just now will be carry on. They are the same question. Jangan buat kerja dua kali. Sama je. Guna balik terus. Therefore, you know straight away, one mole of C6H12O6 is equal to Avogadro constant. I told you just now, one mole of anything will be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So one mole of glucose equals to Avogadro constant. <coughs> and we don't have one mole. We only have 0 0.62, 0 0.264 mole of uh, glucose equals to how many molecules? Jawapan molecule adalah wajib sebab glukos dalam keadaan molekul sekarang. So darab silang sekali lagi. Benda yang sama je sayang. Darab silang. Darab silang. So kamu dapat satu darab X. Okay. Kamu dapat satu darab X adalah X. Kamu dapat 6.02 darab 0.026. Tekan kalkulator dengan betul. Make sure jawapan kamu salin sehingga belakang. Darab 10 kuasa 22, kamu akan dapat jawapan dalam molecule. It's not that we don't have unit, guys. Check your answer. Your answer is not the value. The answer is molecule of glucose. That is your unit. Okay? Kamu um, kena... Yes? Uh, for the number of mole, I've, uh, I've just written it as 0 0.026. So when I calculate it, I got a different answer, like slightly different. It was 1.5652 times 10 to the power of 22. Thank you. Good question because this is the thing that I will, I will, I'm waiting for you to ask. First thing, we don't round off anything over here. We only round off up to four decimal places. Okay? Saya tak suka student saya round off. Suka sangat round off, saya round off maka quiz kamu. Dapat tiga saya bagi kosong. Dapat sembilan pun kosong. Okay. Do not round off anything up to anything that lower than four decimal place. Everything must be in four decimal place. Okay. Alright. Semua jawapan saya nak dalam empat titik perpuluhan selepas ini. Saya dah tak guna significant figures. I want, I want to make it easy for you. So I use the word decimal places. Saya nak four decimal places. Good question. All right, I think I answer your question. 
So if you ask me, you just now you say you only put um, up to 0 0.026 and the answer will be slightly different. And for today, I will say no. So I want all answer is four decimal places. Okay. So next, number of atom of glucose. Number of atom of glucose. So I like minta atom sayang. That is the key. Atom means this. One mole of glucose is having 24 mole of atom. 24 mole of atom because I have 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen and 6 oxygen. That is the 24 come in. Okay? Atom dengan molecule kena boleh beza. So, kalau 1 mole of glucose having 24 moles of atom, and right now, I don't have 1 mole of glucose. I only have 0 0.0264 mole. Remember just now? Therefore, you need to find the mole of atom before you find the number of atom. All right, to find the number of atom, you need the number of mole of atom first. Therefore, find the X, darab silang. I hope you can solve your ratio right now. So, bila kamu darab silang, kamu akan dapat X kamu dengan senang. Your X will be equals to 24 times 0 0.0264. You will have your X, mole of atom. Tapi mole of atom bukan jawapan akhir. Mole of atom bukan benda yang kita nak. Kita nak number of atom. So we compare it back to your Avogadro constant over here. We compare it back to your Avogadro constant over here. Where is my pen? Oh, it's here. All right. Because we want the number of atoms. So one mole of atom is 6.02. Right now, how many moles that you have the one that you calculate just now you bring it over so mole of atom equals to y is the number of atom this is the number of atom beza ya mole of atom adalah number of mole number of atom adalah bilangan atom okay and then you will get your y pretty easily because kamu akan darab sila i don't see any problems there okay uh, ya tak bagi jawapan akhir. Memang tak nak bagi pun. Sebab saya nak kamu kira. So, sila kira. Alright. Memang tak ada jawapan akhir. Y akan jadi darab silang. Satu darab Y. Kosong point ni darab our gado constant. Okay. Problems? No? Okay. No. This one. Sama juga. Senang. Exactly the same. Dia minta benda lain je weh. Dia tadi minta number of atom. Dia minta semua atom. Yang ni, specific oxygen atom. So, it's pretty straightforward. Alright, nak dapat oxygen atom, cari mole of oxygen atom dulu. Always remember, kamu nak benda tu, kamu kena ada number of mole untuk benda tu. So, kalau saya nak number of oxygen atom, kamu kena cari number of mole of oxygen atom. So, you find the number of mole of oxygen atom first. C6, H12O6, 6 oxygen atom. Dapatkan number of mole of oxygen atom, compare balik dengan Avogadro constant. Sebab sekarang soalan nak number of atom. Ni yang soalan nak. So, one mole of oxygen atom will be equals to this much. And right now, I only have 0 0.1584 mole of oxygen atom. How many atom do I have? Dara, sila. Okay, senang gila. Senang sangat. Kena pandai beza apa maksud soalan. Kena boleh beza the difference between number of mole and the difference between uh, atoms. Okay, number of mole of atom and number of atom are different. And this one is pretty straightforward. Dia nak mass. Dia nak mass. Bermakna kita akan bermain dengan mola mass. Okay. Kita akan bermain dengan molar mass kat sini. Number of mole is the same. One mole is 12 hydrogen atom. Okay. So from that, you will get hydrogen atom. That is mole of hydrogen atom. Look at it. That is mole. Soalan minta mass. Bermakna kita akan compare dengan mass of hydrogen atom. One mole of hydrogen atom. Satu je sayang. Bukan gas ya. It's an atom. So one gram. One to one ratio. 
Yang ni tak boleh kira aku ketuk kepala sampai penyek. Question? Uh, madam. Yes? Uh, jawapan Madam uh, terbalik ke? Terbalik ke? 0.3168 Oh, ya. Yeah. Saya salin-salah. Saya salin-salah. Excited sangat. 3, 1, 6, 8. Ya, ah. ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, yeah. Gram. 0. Ya. Yeah. Question? Nak Kita kena guna ratio. Tak boleh guna yang bahagi darab tu. Saya nak guna ratio. Hmm, Okey. Sebab kita akan guna konsep ratio dalam uh, calculation 1.3 nanti. Kalau kamu tengok 1.3 cerita dia adalah stoichiometry. Stoichiometry means kita akan guna ratio. Okay. Boleh guna bahagi atau darab. Tak ada masalah. Tapi kamu kena pandai guna ratio ni juga. Okay. Dan kalau dalam exam bahagi dengan darab tu problem dia adalah sentiasa saya lupa nak bahagi atau darab. Betul. Tapi bila kamu guna ratio, tak perlu hafal pun ni. Kan? Alright. Satu mol sama dengan berapa? Satu mol sama dengan berapa? So saya ada berapa, saya nak cari apa? Darab silang. Settle. Alright. Tak payah hafal pun. Okay. Cara ni saya ajar sebab saya tak suka budak buat salah sebab dia terlupa nak bahagi atau darab. Yang tu saya tak minat. Okay. This one. Uh, yes. Action. Uh, Madam, yeah. uh, untuk yang satu mol ZN tu, uh, yang sama dengan tu memang wajib tulis kan? Yang mana satu mol? Yang bersama N tu lah yang macam nak cari X tu. Mm -hmm. Wajib tulis ke kalau macam darat tu dulu macam tu? Yang ni, you mean? Uh, yang atas tu, yang atas tu. Yang ni? Yang atas tu? Uh, This yeah. one? Yes, yes. This one wajib? Yang ni kalau tak tulis tak apa. Ni faham tak sekarang ni? Saya nak kamu guna ratio. Tu cerita dia. Okay. Saya nak kamu guna, benda ni kita panggil mole ratio. Saya nak kamu buat dalam bentuk ratio. Okay. Sebab dalam exam nanti saya tak nak kamu confuse benda tu patut darab atau bahagi. The moment bila kamu guna ratio, kamu tak perlu hafal pun. Okay. Kamu tak perlu hafal pun. Contoh soalan ni. Soalan ni, contoh soalan yang saya dah highlight ni. Soalan ni kamu sebenarnya wajib guna ratio. Ratio kat sini satu makah. Ni satu makah. Saya nak ingatkan sekali lagi, you are not in SPM di mana jawapan betul hanya akan bagi satu makah. Kalau jawapan betul pun, atas yang lain tak tulis, kamu takkan dapat makah untuk benda atas. Jawapan akhir satu makah. Satu makah je lah dapat. Kamu takkan dapat makah penuh walaupun jawapan kamu betul. Kat atas ni akan dapat satu makar. Kenapa kat atas ni dapat satu makar? Sebab one mole of zinc chloride will give you three mole of ion. Statement ni akan dapat satu makar. Because your zinc chloride will have ZN2 plus one and then will have Cl minus two. Satu biji tambah dua biji. So you will have three ions. So one mole of zinc chloride will give you three mole of ion. Statement ni kena ada. Satu makar. Betul. Kalau kamu tak ada statement ni, soalan saya kenapa kamu darab tiga? What, why you times three? Why suddenly you need to times three? Okay. Same things. One mole of zinc chloride, this one, the difference between these two questions is that I want to insist ion and cation are different. Ion is both an ion plus with cation. Cation is only positive charge. So one mole of zinc chloride only have one mole of positive charge. So one mole of cation. Okay. That is the difference. Yang lain sama. Okay, yang lain sama. Cari number of mole dulu. Sentiasa cari number of mole dulu. Kalau soalan minta bilangan baru compare dengan Avogadro. Constant. Alright. Always, always find the number of mole first before you compare with your Avogadro. Constant. Okay. Um, excuse me, madam. Yes. Uh, can we use unknowns in exam? The like X, Y, Z? Yes. Okay. You can use unknown as long as at the end of the answer, do you realize that I put the unit down? 
All right, we put the unit down. So you can use the unknown. It's okay. As long as you put down the unit, the answer that you calculate is for what? Is the number of ion, is the number of cation, is the mass, is the number of mole, then yes. Okay? Like this, so Alan? Uh, miss, I have a question. Yes? Uh, not only for this, but for any chemistry calculation, is it necessary to write the unit in every single step or is this at the end of the question? Mm. Because you will encounter a very long calculation, okay, in most of your questions. If you encounter a long calculation, you might come across a lot of values before your final answer. So can you memorize every value is what? That is the question. Okay. All right. For example, for some question, okay, you might come across a lot of values. Okay. For some question, you might need to calculate number of mole. Okay. Number of mole of a few things. Number of mole of ions. Number of mole of cation. And if you ask me, is that a must to put down the unit of this value? Uh, okay, if it's not a final answer, then the unit might not be so important. But the title in front of the value is a must. Masalah yang kita selalu jumpa for student, when you encounter a long calculation, kamu press, saya perasan, budak suka letak sama dengan. Dari awal sampai hujung, dia letak sama dengan. Tapi saya tak tahu sama dengan tu, value tu apa benda saya tak tahu. Alright. So, my advice is you must, this one is a must, you must put down the title of the value. You must know what are you calculating. The unit is not a must, alright, not necessary, optional, if it's not final answer. But if it's a final answer, then your unit is a must. Okay? Unit is a must over here okay but you must have title you must know what are you calculating all right uh if it wouldn't be too harsh on you i think putting down the unit wouldn't make anything harder just put down the unit because the value can be in gram if you're talking about mass the value can be in gram the value can be in kilogram if you're talking about volume the volume can be in milliliter the volume can be liter so your value right now is in what unit? If you ask me, then I would say yes. But if you ask me, do you have marks for the unit? Uh, no. But yeah, you will take the wrong unit with the wrong, you will take the wrong value with the wrong unit. Okay? If you ask me, then it's better you put lah. Tapi yang ni saya memang pantang eh. Sama dengan dari awal sampai hujung tu saya memang pantang. Saya memang tak suka. Okay, question. Question, okay. Kalau okay, tak ada apa. Question 3 tadi kita dah tengok. Uh, senang? Saya still prefer kamu semua guna ratio. Okay, saya still prefer semua orang guna ratio. Okay. Saya serious. Sebab akan ada maka way. Ratio tu satu maka. Kenapa kamu nak tekan kalkulator tu terus? I know you are smart. Keep the smart. Alright? Show everything. Okay? Kamu hanya akan pandai bila kamu dapat markah penuh. Kalau kamu tak dapat markah penuh, for me, kamu tak pandai. So, jangan jangan tunjuk pandai tu. Tulis apa yang kamu tahu. Show everything. Okay? Alright. We will be going to the second thing. Empirical formula and molecular formula. <sighs> simple, simple. Empirical formula, simplest whole Number ratio. Perkataan ratio wajib. Alright. Bukan simplest whole number ya. Eh. Simplest whole number ratio. We are talking about perkadaran. Carbon 4, hydrogen 12. That is carbon 3, hydrogen 4. Oh, sorry. That is carbon 1, hydrogen 3. Perkadaran. 4 kepada 12 bersamaan dengan 1 kepada 3. So, ratio adalah wajib. Of all element in a molecule, molecular formula, actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule. Molecule boleh, compound pun boleh. 
Okey, biasa kita guna molecule lah. Tapi yang saya rasa kamu selalu tinggal perkataan ratio. Dalam empirical formula ratio wajib because we are talking about the ratio. Senang, tak ada apa. Okey, something like this only. So molecular formula is the real number. For example, I have C6 H12O6 just now for your glucose. So what would be the empirical formula? Senang, C H2O. That is the empirical formula. Easy. Formula to calculate the factor. This is the factor, all right? Darab berapa. Okay. So is the molar mass of the empirical formula, like just now, C H2O. The molar mass of this is carbon 12 tambah dengan hydrogen 1.0 times 2, oxygen 16. So kamu pun kira yang ni. Kamu dapat 12, <coughs> 28, 30. So let's say the molar mass molecule that I have that is given is 60 gram per mole. Okay. So 30 and 30 equals to 60 and equals to 2. So your molecular formula will then be CH2O times 2, which is c 2 H4O2. Senang. Okay, we'll look at example straight away. Alright. Soalan senang. First question, empirical formula of P. Second question, molecular formula when the molar mass given is 212 gram per mole. Okay, yang dah dapat. Empirical formula dapat berapa? C3H6O4. Okay, let's see. The entire question of empirical formula were based on this table. Alright, whenever the question asks for empirical formula, the only thing that you do is this table that contain of element, mass, number of mole, and simplest ratio. Duduk dunia mana pun, Kamu still akan buat cara yang sama untuk empirical formula dan jangan tunjuk pandai. Jangan buat cara lain. Saya menyampa benda senang tapi kamu nak tunjuk pandai, tak nak ikut. That is what I don't like. The simplest way, use this table. Put down the element. The element that we have over here is hydrogen. The element that we have over here is carbon. The element that we have over here is oxygen. Next. Soalan bagi dalam percentage. Tapi in our table, is a mass. So I would say mass or percentage. Masukkan terus. Hydrogen, 5.7. Carbon, 34.3. Oxygen, 60. Masukkan je percentage tu. Okay, dalam uh, mass. To find the number of mole, you always divide with the molar mass. So we know that number of mole is mass over molar mass. So the mass that you have, 5.7, the molar mass of hydrogen is 1. And then, you will have, uh, yang ni tak ia tekan kalkulator, dapat 5.7. So 34.3 divided by 12, that is the molar mass of carbon, which is 12 gram per mole. And then, you will have the number of mole. Mole mole and oxygen also you will divide with the molar mass which is 16. So you will get the number of mole of oxygen. Saya rasa tak ada masalah setakat ini. And look at one thing. Decimal places. Okay. Look at one thing is decimal places. How many decimal places I'm taking? Up to four. Kenapa 5.7? Sebab dia memang asal satu titik perpuluhan. 3.75 bukan sebab saya round off. Siapa yang kira dia akan tahu sebab kalkulator memang dapat dua titik perpuluhan. Kalau kamu kira dapat banyak titik perpuluhan kat belakang, saya nak empat. Tak boleh kurang daripada empat. Tak boleh round off kat sini. At any point. Next. Simplest ratio is the number of mole divide with the smallest number of mole. Okay. So the smallest number of mole, 5.7, 2.8, 3.7. Tengok nombor kecil je pun. 
So semua orang akan bahagi dengan 2.8583. Everybody will divide with the smallest number of mole. That is the technique to get the simplest ratio. In the other words, there will be satu mamat, satu paci yang akan mesti kena dapat satu. Alright, sebab akan ada seorang yang mesti akan divide dengan diri dia sendiri which is this. So kamu dapat satu. Over here, when you press your calculator, jangan round off 1.9942. Same thing, jangan round off 1.3120. Round off, round off, tapi round off to four decimal places. And the question that we want to discuss start now. Yang ni yang saya nak bincang. Kalau dalam SPM, yang ni akan jadi dua. Yang ni akan kekal satu, yang ni akan jadi satu. Kalau kat SPM. Dan saya nak bagi tahu kat sini, salah. Okey, kurang tepat. Apa yang salah ataupun apa yang kurang tepat adalah kita tak boleh round off suka-suka hati. The only things that we can round off is only 0.1 or 0.9 ataupun 0.0. When the thing is 0.0, 0.1 or 0.9, then we can round off. For example, 1.0321, then you can change it to 1. If you have 2.1752, then you can round it, up, round it off to 2. If you have 1.9125, whatever random number, tapi 0.9, then you can make it to 2. Okay? Selain daripada ini, you cannot round off. Okay? If you have 0.2, if you have 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, you cannot round off. So what do we do when we cannot round off? We are going to multiply the number with a smallest factor. Contoh, 1.32, 1.3. Kita kena darab dengan satu nombor yang paling kecil supaya dia boleh dekat dengan nombor yang kamu boleh round off ini. Okay, so press your calculator. 1.312. If 1.312 times 2, you will only have 2.6240. 2.6 tak boleh round off. So darab 2 salah. So kalau darab 2 tak boleh, move on to a larger number, darab 3. Bila kamu darab 3, kamu akan dapat over here is 3.9360. 3.9 boleh round off. So times 3 is the factor that we want, okay? And since times 3 is the factor that we want, so what happened? Everything times 3. Everything akan darab 3 kat sini. Darab 3, darab 3, darab 3. So the simplest ratio that you obtain at the end of the day over here will be 5.9, 5.9, 8.9, 5.9, 8.9, 2.6, over here will be 3, over here will be 3.936, okay? And 3.936 will be approximately 4, that will be approximately 6. Boleh round off. Jawapan akhir tak dapat lagi. Question asking for empirical formula, don't miss out your final answer. Must rewrite your empirical formula calculated right now is hydrogen 6, carbon 3, oxygen 4. Okay. Okay. Question. Question. No. Next. Are you are you still with me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Next, we are looking for N, the last thing, okay? We are looking for N and empirical formula, Molamas, empirical formula that we calculated is H6C3O4, okay? So, you just darab je lah. 6 darab 1.0, tambah 3 darab 12.0, tambah 4 darab 16.0, dapat 2, 1, 2, gram per mol. Gram per mol ni soalan dah bagi. 2.12 ni soalan dah bagi. So kamu akan dapat N sama dengan 
106.0 equals to 212.0 gram per mole. So n equals to 2. n equals to 2, not the final answer. Final answer. Molecular formula. All right. Jangan tinggal jawapan akhir. For molecular formula is H12C6O8. Ataupun siapa yang tulis C6, H12, O8 pun sama. Okay. This is your final answer. Don't forget. Your N2 is only the uh, calculation, part of the calculation, not your final answer. Okay. Question? Miss. Yes. Kalau yang dalam kotak empirical formula tu kan, dia memang kena tunjuk jalan kira. Kalau untuk yang? Dalam kotak empirical formula tu. Ha, itu. Kena dia tunjuk uh, jalan kerja tak? Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Wajib. Kamu wajib. Uh, saya rasa yang kamu nak tanya adalah number of more kena tunjuk ke tak? Betul? Ni. Uh, ha, ha, itulah yang tunjuk. Oh, sangat. Yang akan dapat maka sebenarnya adalah jalan kerja tu. Alright. Especially, especially for the simplest ratio. The simplest ratio, you know, you know what is getting the marks? When I see everybody divide with the smallest number. When everybody divide with the smallest number, that is your one mark. So, kamu wajib tunjuk jalan kerja tu. Lagi question I heard just now? Yes. If the element in the box, we never follow like uh, HCO, we uh, rearrange like CHO like that. Yes, you can. Thank you. But make sure when the value that you put in is also according to what you arrange. Okay, yes, you can. You can rearrange. Lagi? Lagi? Yang kali tiga kena tulis tak? Kali tiga kena tulis sebab saya nak nampak semua orang darab tiga. Sama, yang tu pun satu makah. Bila saya kata, bila kamu kata darab tiga kan, semua orang darab tiga ni kena tulis. Okay, semua orang darab tiga ni kena tulis. Lagi? Uh, miss. Mm -hmm. For the number of mode uh, in the, mm -hmm. the the first row, if, mm -hmm. if I write uh, the unit in bracket mode. So uh, for H, C and O, I don't have to write the unit, right? Yes. If you write the number of mole over here, the unit number of mole, then no need. Then yes, I, I get what you mean. Means you do it like a table, right? So you have it down here. Okay, acceptable. Lagi? Okay, I think the main thing that I want to teach today in your empirical formula, empirical formula is something that you have learned in school a lot, all right? I believe you come across this table very, very much. The biggest problem that you didn't come across is kamu tak boleh round off kat sini. So, kamu kena darab dengan satu faktor. Dan bila nak darab dengan satu faktor, I always tell my student, tekan je kalkulator, darab dua dekat tak dengan sembilan, darab tiga. Kalau darab dua tak boleh, baru darab tiga. Okay, always, you must multiply by a smallest factor. And when you multiply the factor with one number, remember they are ratio. Kalau satu, tiga, uh, dua, katakan. So, bila kamu darab dua dengan uh, a number, kamu darab dua dengan dua, so semua orang kena darab dua. Remember, diorang adalah per kat, what's wrong with my pen? Because they are per kadaran. Sebab diorang adalah perkadaran. So, bila kamu darab dua dengan satu nombor, perkadaran tu kena darab. Semua orang dalam perkadaran tu kena darab. So, berhati-hati. When you times three, everybody need to times three. Yes, you need to show. Then only you can round off. Okay, then only you can round off. You can only round off, bear that in mind, you can only round off when they are 0 0.0, 0 0.1 or 0 0.9. Anything other than that, you cannot round off and you must multiply by a factor. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, Miss. Uh, saya nak ingatkan satu benda. 
I think I am the laziest lecturer that you might actually come across. Saya rasa semua benda yang saya tunjuk adalah yang paling simple saya nak kamu buat. So don't try to simplify my answer. Tak payah tanya dah teacher benda ni kena tunjuk ke? Ya yeah, kena tunjuk. Kalau benda yang tak payah tunjuk saya tak tunjuk sayang. Saya pun malas. Okay. So make sure kamu tunjuk calculation tu. Jangan malas. Masalah paling utama adalah I think your SPM is jawapan betul dapat maka penuh. If I'm not mistaken saya rasa. Okay. Sebab kami dapat budak yang jawab soalan macam tu. Especially budak yang konon pandai sikit tu. You can press everything in your calculator and you give me one single value. And I, I hate that. Okay. We don't do that. Over here final answer is only one mark. So write everything clearly. Yang tu yang akan dapat maka. Okay. Next. Just a bit. Two minutes on your uh, concentration sebab saya nak pesan sedikit sebelum kita masuk concentration next week. Uh, make sure you can differentiate solute, solvent, solution. Bahasa Melayu dia sol solute saya google tadi. Saya tak tahu betul ke tak. Betul kan saya kalau saya salah. Solute adalah barat bahan terlarut. Contoh eh, gula. Solvent adalah uh, pelarut. Baru tadi saya google. Lepas tu dah lupa. Pelarut saya rasa. Uh, contoh, air kosong. Your solution adalah larutan. Oh my god, horrible. Larutan. So, kamu dapat air gula. Okay. Contoh dalam eksperimen one kamu. Your solute is actually your zinc powder. Your solvent is your hydrochloric acid. So, when you add your zinc powder into your hydrochloric acid, you will form a solution of zinc chloride. That is what you are forming. Okay. So, bahan terlarut, pelarut dan uh, larutan. Bahan terlarut tak semestinya solid. Dia boleh jadi liquid. Contoh, sirap pekat. Sirap pure tu. Kamu campur dengan air, kamu dapat air sirap. Okay. So, sirap pure tu sebenarnya dalam botol, dalam liquid. Dalam keadaan liquid. Betul. So, sirap pure tambah air, dapat air sirap. That is your solute solvent solution. Because in all the formula that you will come across later on, is always about dia adalah apa. Okay. You have five concentration that you need to learn. And before next week lecture, I want everybody memorize the formula already. Mole of upper bahagi volume of upper. Satu, solute, solvent or solution. Benda pertama. Benda kedua, unit. The unit is the most important thing that you will get wrong in concentration. So, dia mesti dalam unit mole bahagi liter. Yang ni tak payah tanya. Unit tak ada memang salah. Unit is a mass. So, you have five concentration to memorize. Untuk molality, mole of solute over mass of solvent, mole in kg. Tak ada pilihan, mesti kg. Okay. Mole fraction must be mole in mole. Percentage by mass adalah percentage by mass. Yang ni kenapa tak ada unit? Pergi tengok video. Okay. I want you to memorize all these five, uh, what do we call this? Five uh, density. Okay lah, density sekali. Density is not concentration. This is concentration. I want you to memorize all these five concentration with the correct term and the correct unit. Okay? And I will ask. We will see siapa manusia bertua tu untuk menjawab soalan ni. Minggu depan. Okay, minggu depan kita akan masuk uh, concentration dan juga stoichiometry. Question? Okay. Ada masalah nak hafal concentration tu ke? Senang je. Hafal. Dan uh, cara yang paling senang. Oh by the way, talking about concentration, talking about molarity, I think you always use this in your concentration. Last time. Dulu, zaman sekolah, kamu suka tulis molarity macam ni. Saya rasa. Selalu saya jumpa. Saya tak nak nampak benda ni ever in your life. Is that clear? 
saya tak nak nampak molarity dalam bentuk short form like this ever again. Your molarity formula must be complete mole of solute in mole, volume of solution in liter. No option. That is the shortest that I can give. Okay. Saya tak nak jumpa apa-apa yang pendek daripada apa yang saya bagi di sini. Alright. Okay. Kalau tak ada apa, your attendance. Kalau ada apa-apa, boleh WhatsApp saya, boleh tanya. Hi, teacher. Yes. May I ask for every calculation we must maintain in four decimal point? Yes. Not only on this chapter, right? Yes. Okay. Everything Thank until you. the end of the SAM is four decimal places. Only the final answer can be in two decimal places. Uh, and the final answer I mean over that is like the final of the final answer. So if you have A, B, C, D, then the D is the final answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Yeah. Just gonna. Scan as well. All right, off you go. Siapa yang dah scan, off you go. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam. 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 Thank you